What I want to go over today is actually really simple. I just want to go over the different options that you have for pinning objects versus not pinning an object, okay? And it's, I'm just going to use a simple shape um, <clears throat> and just kind of go over this so that you understand what you can and cannot do with pinning and what the different pinning options are. Pinning basically assigns a location to the page and it all depends upon the size of the browser. And that is actually one of the really big issues with um, designing for web is that browsers can be all different shapes. You can resize the window as you please, uh, different displays are different sizes, different ratios. You can buy super widescreen monitors versus the old school square monitors. And you don't know, you know which one of those things your person that is looking at your website is going to have. So trying to make the website responsive and trying to make things show up in about the same place is a good idea. So if I just take a rectangle here, and I'm just going to just kind of draw a rectangle right in the middle, and let's just fill it. We'll fill it with some nice blue color there. It matches the top bar. <coughs> Actually, it does not match the top bar. Now it matches the top bar. OK. What I can do now with this, with this bar selected is I can pin it to any different number of, of things. So right now, it's directly in the center. And if I leave it be, save, and I'll build this page, without pinning anything, it's going to scroll up and down with the rest of the page. Okay. However, if I go back and I decide to pin it, I can pin it to the top of the page. So let's go top center here. So just click on that little rectangle, that little dot right there in the top. Save. Let's go back and rebuild. Now that I've pinned it, you can see that it will stay in the same place on the page and it will stay in that place in the center according to however I do this. And you see it adjusts its uh, size. Why would you want that? That's actually a really good question. Um, so look now, right now, see how I scroll and how this is leaving, my, my uh, menu bar is leaving, and so is the title. I might want to pin those to the, to the top so that they always stay. So for instance, let's go back here. Let's just pin, we'll, let's, let's do the, oh, it's on my master. So if I go back to my master here and click pin and pin that to the center, save, go back, and now rebuild it, you'll see that the, the menu bar moves. Now this is what's interesting. I pinned the, the back menu bar, but this is actually still scrolling because I didn't pin the, pin the menu itself. So it is important to kind of understand what's going on. Now. <clears throat> Let's go, back to, um, let's go back to this. So now, the, I can also pin it to the top left, OK? And so what will happen, let's make this a little shorter, even if I put it in the center of the page. So I'm leaving it in the center of the page. Watch how it moves when I resize the browser, though. So right now, it's in the center of the page. But as I resize the browser, notice that it stays off to the left a little bit more, OK? and still stays in place, but it's, it's off to this left side. But if I go back here, it looks like it's in the center. So that's another really important thing to understand about pinning, is it may look like it's in one position when you pin something, and it might actually be in a different position. So here I'll go pin to the top right, save, rebuild, and you'll see now it's pushed over. So that's what the top left looked like. That's like what pinning it to the top right looks like. And um, if I go back here, it still is in the center. Now I can do the same thing to bottom. And uh, bottom, center, left, right. Let's just see if there's any visual difference here. So now it went, it went up here. That's kind of weird. I don't know why I did that. But hey, <clears throat> I almost never pin stuff to the top uh, or to the bottom pins. Anyway, so now we're going to go over here. Now this is pin to center right of the page or the container in a more of a relative setup. So if I click this one, save and rebuild, now you can see that it's going to scroll with the page, but it's pinned to the center of the page this way. So if somebody resizes the browser, the object will stay in the center, but it will scroll. So here's, here's the important 
concept between the two different pinning setups. This pinning setup here on the left, this pins your object to a specific location on the browser and it stays there. It does not scroll with the content. This one over here will scroll up and down with the content, but it pins it in a specific position horizontally. And so again, if I pin it to the left and rebuild the page, now you can see now it's interesting, it's actually staying towards the right a little bit more, but it's still scrolling up and down. So that's what the, the idea of the pinning is definitely, um, you know, well, it is good for certain things. You just have to be mindful of the fact that it's going to try and keep, so if I pin to the left, it's trying to keep this distance. See this little dotted line here? It's trying to keep this dotted line kind of the same. That's actually why I pushed it over to the right. But moreover, if I push this over to the left now, save and rebuild, now you can see how that works, and you can see how it, it's, gonna, it's going to stay over close to that side of the um, browser. Now, the other thing that's happening is it's, uh, it's also changing its size. So if I were to go back here, click on it, and set its resize to none, now you're going to see um, it's going to behave a little bit even more differently. It's going to stay in there. And see how it's, it's slowly, it is getting a little bit different. The spacing here is a little different. But it's essentially staying in the same place on the left. <clears throat> this is very handy if you have like a logo up here and you do want your menu to scroll up, OK? Pinning your logo to the left-hand side using this pinning method here is actually really helpful. So let's take our top, let's, I'm going to take this, I'm going to unpin it. So I just clicked in the center and it took the pin off. Save my master, go back to this. Now I'm going to, uh, I, have a, I have a logo here, so let's double click into here and just, come on. I'm going to copy my logo, copy, go back here, edit, paste in place. So it's going to come over here and right now I have it pinned so that it doesn't move. So if I do that, it's pinned to the left and it stays all the way over in the corner. See that? And when I scroll, it stays there. That doesn't look good now that my menu bar is actually scrolling up. So if I go back here, change the pin to the left center like this, you're going to see it's actually going to jump over because what it's going to do is it's going to try and stay in the same vicinity as this edge here. And if the browser is a lot bigger than that, it's just going to try to stay in that same general area. So now, you'll notice it scrolls up and down. Notice it's not any longer all the way over to the left. And it stays in that position the entire time. Now, its size is set to responsive, so it's changing size as the browser changes size there. I would get rid of that. But hopefully, that will give you a sense of how the pinning works. Sometimes you need to move things around a little bit after you pin them, like, no, I want it here, or I want it up here. You have to experiment a little bit. But essentially, that's the difference. So review. The left pinning options, pin it, no scrolling, and it stays in an absolute position based on the page okay, that you see in the browser, the window that you see in the browser. The pinning options on the right will actually pin it relative to scrolling and relative to its container, which is this page. So you notice that the page only has a little sliver of gray. But if I go back here, the gray is actually bigger. It's going to stay in its position relative to the edge of the gray part that is designed in Muse. That's the edge of that container, as opposed to the whole browser width. Okay, So that's also kind of important to, 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 fi to keep in mind. Does that make sense? You sure? Okay.